will inform even such people to have their own uh, way of living. Definitely they'll have their own kind of its own community dynamic. I don't want to quote um, Dr. Rampila Rampila when he was saying poverty is a disease. And it's a disease, it can spread from one area to another. Therefore, you can see that if maybe we're having this poverty, poverty can spread even among people within the community. At the end, that community will be known as a impoverished community. Then that impoverished community, it will define that particular community at, at its, its own community dynamic. The Constitution of South Africa has informed also the Reconstruction and Development Program of 1994. Next slide, Tom. Next slide, thank you. The Reconstruction and Development Program of 1994, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, it was covered by these mics and whatever on my screen. The Reconstruction and Development Program of 1994 was established and formed by the Constitution of South Africa. Reconstruction. It was reconstructing the lives of poor people, reconstructing people who did not have resources before, reconstructing people who were dispossessed with the land, reconstructing people so that they can know themselves as a community like other communities that are staying in town. That is the reconstruction. Those poor people or poor communities who did not have access to houses, the new government started to provide free houses, we call them RDP. Those who did not access to water, those communities, they start to have access to water. Even though they are not all, we are still having challenges of water. But we are progressing towards that. To integrate socioeconomic issues aimed to address inequality, poverty, and underdevelopment. That was the Reconstruction and Development Program. It was applied to address this gap of socioeconomic that was experienced prior 1994. Again, there is white paper on social South African land policy of 1994. It was approved to guide the government on how to redistribute land. I said initially that land was owned 87% by minority. Now, we want to take land back, but in a nice manner, so that we don't disturb the agricultural development and food security. Therefore, we are using this policy so that those people can get land that is suitable for them. The land that belonged to them before uh, the colony, it must be taken back to them so that they experience this agricultural development to come out of poverty, so that we cannot label those communities as poor communities or other communities as rich communities. We must be the same by doing that, following the very same land act. However, land redistribution, ladies and gentlemen, currently as we are speaking, it was very, very slow. The process was very slow. The South African government has put target to take land to all those poor communities. By 2014, the target was 30% of land to be taken to the vulnerable poor people. But 25.5 million hectares was the only one that was targeted as 30%. Unfortunately, by 2014, it was 6%. If I'm not when I was doing my study, it was 6,7 percent. Currently, in 2020, we are at 12,2 percent. Just imagine, when are we going to reach that 87 percent of taking land back to the people? We are at 12,2 percent in 2020. Therefore, it will mean that different communities in South Africa are still experiencing challenges 
and hence more research needs to be done so that we bring solutions towards all these challenges that we are talking about. Next slide, Doc. What drives community dynamics? Ladies and gentlemen, I know even in Indonesia, there are some certain elements, certain aspects that are driving community dynamics. Maybe because of the socioeconomic conditions, but elements or aspects are there. Therefore, let's learn what actually drives community dynamics in South Africa. Communities are classified based on different reasons, power dynamics within the communities. You'll find that most of the people, because of political power, are having influences to certain individuals, whereby other people might even opt to stay somewhere because they are in favor of a certain political party. They can even form their own community where majority of people are those people who are favoring a certain party. That is something that is experienced also in South Africa. And that can also inform the type of community dynamic or community of its own kind. Again, for an example, when talking about those political powers, for example, there are newly established of informal settlements. Those informal settlements, those are the areas. In some other areas, there were land grabbing. You'll find that certain political leaders are influencing people to give themselves sites to stay without proper approval from the state. Once they do that land grabbing, obvious those people who like that, it will be people who are aligned to those political parties. Therefore, they'll end up having that kind of that community staying there because they've given themselves sites or land to stay. The squatter camps. We've got a community of squatter camps. I don't know whether in Indonesia there are some people who call squatter camps. Because in some other countries, squatter camps are experienced especially for refugees. If people are coming from other areas, we put them in the squatter camps in other countries. But in South Africa, people can move from their own area and go and stay next to towns. They can even build informal shelters there next to town without papers, without allowance or access, without permits. They stay there because they are next to resources. So that when job availability is available, they might access those jobs immediately because they are staying next to town. Those people are staying there, but they don't have permit to stay there. Those people that are just living on a daily basis because they are comforted by the reason that they are next to towns and cities. Then those people will stay there in those camps or in those quarters. But the main intention of those people will be looking for job in cities and towns. Therefore, those people will form their own community, a community of squatter camp. They can even give themselves a name to say squatter community or squatter area. That is a community of its own kind. As I said that, when they go next to the cities, they'll be going for better socioeconomic or for economic opportunities because most of the opportunities or job opportunities are in towns and cities as compared to the rural areas. Therefore, they will go in squatter next to those cities so that they access all those other things that they are wishing to have. Next slide, Doc. The economic power. Other people who have financial muscles and who are well resourced than those who do not have, they used to have a certain area to stay. For example, if you are well educated in South Africa, earning between um, earning between 180 and up, you can stay in town. Therefore, those who do not have, they cannot stay in town because they will not afford uh, services that are offered in town. 
Therefore, those people, if they move from their own original community into towns, they will form their own community there. It will no longer be a community of white people. It will be a community of white, Indian, Chinese, black people in that particular area. That is another community of its own kind or a community of middle classes in town because they are uh, able to do those things because of financial muscles. Ladies and gentlemen, I wanted you to understand the status of education in South Africa, because even education informed the community dynamics that we're talking about. In the past, ladies and gentlemen, in the past pre-1994, a black person was not allowed to go into the classroom with a white Indian people or students. Only at the university is where we're mixing so that we access that institution of higher learning classes. But when you are at primary and secondary up to grade 12, you were not allowed to go to school where white people are schooling. Group Areas Act, you were able to have your own school, its own department, its own curriculum, while other curriculum of whites, Indians, colors are different from other curricula of the black people. That is education of the past. Hence, we call it in South Africa, Bantu education. We call it Bantu education, meaning is the education of the black people. And there is education of the white people. And there is education of the Indian people. There is education of other people or other communities. Hence, in 1994, this act was developed, the South African Schools Act of 1996. The act gave children of all races, including me, to access the school of our own choice anywhere, any province, as long as it is in South Africa. Therefore, it is because of after 1994, after getting democracy, is then a black child, an Indian child, a white child can sit in one classroom and access education at the same level, same grade. Another element that drives dynamics in community uh, in South Africa, uh, dependency syndrome. We are having a challenge in South Africa of dependency syndrome. Maybe it is because of apartheid, things that happened in the past. As we all know that, the past can inform the present, and even the present can inform the future. Then, dependence syndrome was caused by the past of apartheid regime. Like now, we're having over 17 million, which is close to half of the total population in South Africa. They depend on social grants, such as old age grant, grants for all veterans, foster care grants, and child support grants. Those grants were given to all South Africans after 1994, with the main purpose to tackle poverty that has been created for so many years, so that we tackle poverty amongst the children, so that children cannot go to school with an empty stomach, so that we tackle poverty within the households, in the communities that we used to say they are poor communities. Therefore, the government was trying to bring this so that at the end, our communities are better off, better off out of poverty. For example, for child support grant, each child is getting 480. It can be close to 35 US dollar. I'm not quite sure. I haven't done the calculation. But it's 480. Each child, every month, is getting that 
amount of money. It's a problem because it's a dependency syndrome on the basis that many young girls sometimes opt to leave the school and have more children so that they access more than 480. And hence, we're having this challenge. Initially, it was a very good initiative, but as we go on, it was a problem because people are misusing the opportunity that the government has created. Next slide, Doc. Currently, around March 2020, as we all know that we are confronted by COVID-19, most of the people, um, they've lost jobs because other companies or businesses have closed down. Therefore, the government came up with a grant. We call it COVID-19 grant, whereby each person who do not work, who does not have any income, he or she must access 350 for a period of six months. It was from April to October 2020. Now the government has extended that to uh, January 2021, so that those people access this grant free of charge, so that they are able to buy whatever. However, ladies and gentlemen, most of the people, especially the young people, are misusing the grant for child support and for COVID-19 by having fun instead of empowering themselves. Community structures, as such, they are defeating the concept or the main idea of South Africa, of a development state. Mind you, if we talk about a development state, people must do things on their own in a development state. People must be creative, for example, by implementing strategies on entrepreneurship, whereby people are developing and manufacturing on their own, whereby they are owners of those manufacturing companies and employ other people. That is other strategies that can be utilized. But it's not like that, and hence the development state that we're envisaging in South African communities is not realized. It is defeated by these grants that are misused. In the communities in South Africa, we're having community structures. I don't know in Indonesia. Community structures such as Sanko, Sanko means South African National Civic Organizations. We're having what committees? What committees are helping councillors who are delivering municipal services to the local communities in all wards of South Africa, in all 52 district municipalities in South Africa. Those councillors will be taking those services to the people. They will serve as a mouthpiece between the community as well as the government. Therefore, the community uh, what committees they are helping a what councillor in providing services, even to highlight certain elements that the councillor might not have realized. So say in a community A, there is this problem. Let's try to intervene. Those structures are utilized in that way. Ladies and gentlemen, there is something in South Africa that is taking place, like stock fairs. Stock fairs bring people together in a community, and it also improves social capital. For example, when you talk about stock fairs, I don't know whether you have it in Indonesia or what do you call it, but maybe the research, but you are calling it in another name. A stock fair is a group of people. It can be a group of 5, 10, 15, 20 in a community. They group themselves and bring a vision or an objective of meeting. In that group, they can agree to say, let's have a contribution of 100 rand or 20 US dollar per month. So that come year of the end, year of the end, end of the year. At the end of the year, they will share that money that they've accumulated and they'll be able to buy whatever that they were supposed to buy and they were not managing because of limited amount of money due to, to poverty. 
Therefore, they do such kind of things. Others that win stock fails for buying groceries. For example, a stock fell to say, in quarterly basis, on quarterly basis, we'll buy food. Therefore, we can buy a massive grocery in that quarter. Another quarter, we're going to buy for two, three individuals. Another quarter, we buy for two, three, just like that. Other stock fells are used for building houses. We can have a stock fells for building. For example, a stock fell of contributing 3,000 every month. Therefore, when we do that, every month we'll make sure that we build a house. For example, if maybe you want to do an extension to, to build a garage, a car garage, then with that amount, you'll build a garage. Next time, someone will build a garage. As long as the objective of that group is the same, we call it a stock fair. Others, like myself, we used to have a stock fell of um, having uh, money, sort of pocket money. You know, sometimes money, you can't have a, a lot. Every month, we give each other 3,000 rents. If we are six, it will mean that is six times three, which is 18,000. For this month, it's 18,000 for Dr. Charlie. Next month, it's 18,000 for Dr. Zaki. And that month is um, 18,000 for Dr. Widodo Widodo, just like that. That we call it a stock fair. And in that way, it will promote social capital. If we're having so, such kind of stock fairs, different of them within the communities, then the community will grow. The community will. The community. Next slide. Next slide, Doc. Next slide, Doc. Ah, uh, please wait, Doc. Next slide, yes. I'm sorry, oh, Doc. Uh, oh. I think I think your time may be uh, ten minutes left. I I'm, I'm rounding up, Doc. Don't worry. Okay, thank you. I'm very much uh, time conscious. All right. What needs to be done for South Africa? One, the government to strengthen implementation and monitoring of the policies that uplift the communities out of vulnerabilities. Two, Operation Hunger Policy. We are having that policy in South Africa. As a South African non-governmental organization, this NGO is concerned with chronic and acute malnutrition and poverty in the communities especially at village level. This should be strengthened so that people are not hungry. Assessment of community needs and resources. Community profiling must be done in the communities so that we know the resources that they don't have, the resources that they are in need, as well as the resources that they have already as assets of that particular community. Let's also provide good support systems especially for those people who are trying to commit suicide because of stresses in the communities. Let's have those support systems like psychosocial support so that at the end we cancel those people. Next slide, Doc. Strengthen poverty elevation programs such as community projects. We're having that in South Africa. We are funding projects. We gave them 200,000 rents so that they start their own businesses. Community nutrition development centers, whereby people who are hungry, who do not have income, they come to the center, they access their daily lunch free of charge. We are having expanded public works program, whereby we are targeting the young people who do not have skill. We skill them and provide them with jobs, but those jobs are on contract contract basis. The government must abolish, that is my, my, my own opinion, is not the opinion of the state of South Africa. The government to abolish child support as well as COVID-19 grants. But instead, they must develop strategies such as entrepreneurship that can create more jobs 
for the young people so that they don't depend on those grants. They do things on their own and create jobs for other people. Let's also tighten the access at the South African borders to avoid so many communities that are created in South Africa due to these illegal immigrants. Next slide, Doc. Questions to answer? I think you jumped to the theoretical concept. It's fine. Yes, the theoretical concept. Ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about poverty, vulnerabilities, I think uh, Robert Chambers is the one uh, with this theory that I like because it talks straight to the poor people, to the vulnerable communities, vulnerable in terms of poverty. Because if you are poor, you are isolated, you can't participate in many things, you are weak, you can't take decisions. I, I like this theoretical framework very much. And people in the communities who are poor sometimes fail to do things on their own and depend upon the states. And this will not be able to have a contribution even in the sustainable development goal number two of taking hunger in all countries by 2030. Therefore, this theoretical concept will assist to guide all the studies. If you are doing research, all the studies that are pertaining to poverty, vulnerability, improving sustainable livelihood, this theory will match best for you, ladies and gentlemen. Next slide, Doc. These are my references. I don't have to talk much. I've done this so that you are able to, to see the references, Doc, and students. These are my references. Next slide, Doc. Cherebakasi. Thank you very much. Okay, Doc. That's, that's all from you. So next we will continue to the discussion, Doc. Is that okay? Yes, it's okay with my radio with my pen and paper. Okay. Okay, uh, that's that's the presentation from uh, Dr. Chale uh, from all uh, for all participants who are joining this meeting. Please, uh, if you have any question, please uh, raise your hand and then I will let you to ask directly to Dr. Chale. Please raise your hand. Yes. I'm sure actually uh, for my student, I'm sure they are uh, will have uh, many questions, Doc, but uh, some of them mm. may be uh, not confident for their English. They are not confident yeah. in speaking in English, maybe. Yeah, right, Doc. You know, I really congratulate Indonesia and other countries, uh, those countries that are offering in their own mother tongue. South Africa is doing that, but I don't know whether we'll win it because uh, of that. I understand, but that one is not a problem. If they are willing, they can even use WhatsApp. Then those who are having some need clarity, they can use WhatsApp. Then, and if I have time, I'll try to respond to some of the, the questions. Because, yes, Doc, we cannot expect them to ask questions now. Maybe because of language barrier, but I understand them very well. Okay, but I will I will uh, let my student to show their uh, courage to ask yes. in this meeting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, is there any question from participants? Is that okay? If your English is not good enough, I think there's no problem because my English also not good enough. Yeah. I just saw my confidence. I just confidence to speak in English. Actually, my English is not good enough too. Is there any question? Hello? Sorry, sir. I want to ask you something. Okay, so uh, from Salma. Yeah. Okay. Please. Please, Salma. 
Is it up turning on the camera? Yes, please ask your question. Oh, um, so the white was the regulation that the most of the become the highlight in the agriculture in Africa. Uh, for example, in, in Indonesia, there is a regulation like um, like the government has uh, easily, easily access to farmers to have this certificate. So, is there have that regulation also? Thank you. Uh, Doc, could you get the point? Yes, but I can hardly hear the question. Maybe if you can repeat it. Ah, uh, sorry, Salman. Can you repeat your question because I I also cannot hear your voice clearly. I think your English is clear, but I cannot hear your voice clearly. Okay, bahasa Indonesia <laughs> Okay, okay. In bahasa Indonesia also okay. I will translate for you to Doctor Chale. Okay. <laughs> Ada nggak sih uh, kemudahan pembuatan sertifikat untuk petani, kemudahan seperti itu, seperti di Indonesia? Jadi penanaman modal di pada apa oleh para petani itu jadi lebih mudah, Pak. Oh, berarti ini terkait dengan modal ya, modal petani apakah ya. mudah mendapatkan fasilitas modal dari pemerintah gitu ya? Ya, begitu, Pak. Contohnya seperti sertifikat uh, tanah dan sebagainya begitu, Pak. Oh, gitu. Oke, okay, oke. Okay. Oke, okay, Salma, thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Chale, I would like to try to translate uh, my student's question. In South Africa, oh. is there any policy or program from the government to support uh, farmers regarding the capital, economic capital to start their business, such as uh, giving, uh, provide easy process to make land certificate, land owner certificate, something like that, or maybe financial capital support. Is there any that kind of program in South Africa? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much uh, for the question. Programs are many. Yes, they are there. And uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, Doc. Yes, I was saying, Programs are there, like now, to help even poor people to have land and even participate in agriculture. Yes. There are some land reform and administrative development. The very same program, it even funds the poor people who did not have access to funding, so that at the end they have funds to go and cultivate the land so that they can produce in the land, the reeds. The problem that we are having is that uh, most of the, of the people haven't yet get their land back. Like, again, if I can add, uh, Doc, there is another poverty alleviation program whereby we are funding people between 200,000, 500,000, even up to 800,000 rents, so that they start their own agricultural project, they start their own business, so that they produce. Agriculture department will come in and capacitate those people on how to produce, how to prepare soil according to the different kinds of products that they want to produce. Yes, Doc. Hello, Doc. Uh, how about uh, people who who are uh, owning the agriculture land and then they yes. want to make a land owner certificate? Is that easy in mm. South Africa? It's very easy. We are calling it, under the program, we call it land tenure. Land tenure is the section that deals with administration of land, including 
those who are requesting land to be on their own and have certificates. Then after getting that land, you'll be getting what we call a title deed. A title deed is a certificate that indicates that you own land. Yes, it's possible. Yes. I think that's it for uh, the answer from Dr. Chale. Salma, is that enough for you? Salma? Thank you so much for the answer. Okay, uh, I will ask another student to ask. Is there any other question? Hello? Hello, my students. Uh, saya, Pak. Oh, ya. Yeah. Please, this is Mulki, right? Who? Who is this? Raihan. Raihan. Oke, okay, please Raihan. Uh, apakah anak muda di Afrika tertarik di Afrika Selatan tertarik, sangat tertarik menjadi petani? Kan kalau di Indonesia kan mereka nggak uh, jarang yang tertarik menjadi petani. Apakah di Afrika Selatan juga seperti itu? Oke, okay. thank you Raihan. Uh, Doktor, uh, let me translate what uh, my student asks for you in south africa for young people uh, are they interested to become farmers young people in Afri south africa are they interested to become farmers because in indonesia we found that uh, many young 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 people they don't want to be a farmers they want to be a uh, like uh, maybe in the office or something like that that not dirty yeah. right okay that's the question yes, thank, you. thank you very much doc and thank you for the question it's a wonderful one um, i read another document from ethiopia whereby it's a sort of a study that they are also experiencing young people who are not interested in farming in south africa is we are still experiencing the same thing but we are busy capacitating them making sure that they see the potential or the importance of farming and the advantages of farming yes we are experiencing that in south africa young people seem to drag their feet with regard to that dog we are the same we are the same we are experiencing the same situation But okay. we are doing something. What kind of a uh, program from the government to support young young uh, people to become a farmer? Is there any program to make uh, young people to be interested uh, to become farmers? Yes, programs are there. You know, Doc. At the beginning of my presentation, I said policies are developed are drafted in those policies that are drafted policies were also informing the type of interventions or programs that should be taken to those young people to do or as a guide on how to do farming but however the implementation is a problem the program is there like now there is youth development fund program youth development fund program it helps young people who are interested in farming then if they get land they can be given tractors free of charge they can be given that money so that they buy fertilizers and even in south africa dog there is what we call the stipend or allowance they get allowance every month when they are doing farming. But however, they are just dragging their feet. Programs are there, but people are not there. Okay, thank you, Doc. Maybe we will have one one more question. Is there any other question? Okay. I will open uh, one more question. In, in Bahasa Indonesia also okay. Hello? Hello? Is there any question? 
Yes. Yes, Doc. Doc, I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting. Yes. I'm suggesting because we had. Okay. Okay. Uh, who is this? Suchi. Ah, uh, Suchi, please. Uh, does the COVID-19 virus affect the dynamics of the farming community in there? Can you repeat that, Suchi? Uh, does the COVID-19 virus affect the dynamics of farming community in there? Okay, that is the Definitely. question. No? Definitely, yes. COVID-19 has affected almost everybody. It has affected water provision, affected agricultural development, affected employment. In agriculture specifically, people stopped working during COVID-19. And uh, it's just now in South Africa, we're at level one, whereby people and agriculture were doing something. And for all agricultural activities that were affected by COVID-19, they were given something, COVID-19 Relief Fund. With COVID-19 Relief Fund, we were trying to say yes, um, Farm A or Farm B was operating prior COVID-19 pandemic. Therefore, because of COVID, you were disturbed, maybe in production. Therefore, there is a fund even to boost you because they've been affected. Yes, funds are the COVID-19 relief fund for agricultural farms. Okay, Suchi, is that enough? The answer from Dr. Chale? Yeah, thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, Okay, I will open one more question. Okay, uh, is that okay, Doc? One more question. Yes, it's okay. It's okay, Doc. Uh, is there any other question? One more question. In Bahasa also okay. Bahasa. Yes. Who is this? Ratno, Wak. Ratno Ulan. Okay, please, Ratno. Yes. Yeah, sir. I would like to ask mm -hmm. you a question. Is there any form of integration between farm and livestock production in South Africa? Once more, right now. Can, uh, can, can you raise it the, again, the voice? Is there the any... Voice? Is there any form of integration between farm and livestock livestock production in South Africa? The integration yes. between farming and livestock, though. Yeah. Yes, yes, there is. Even to answer that, in my study, I've done that under my uh, sample. There was a sort of a um, uh, mixed farming. Mixed farming is an integration of that farming and livestock, meaning that you can do crop as well as livestock. You can do livestock, wild farming, uh, game ranging, as well as crop farming. Yes, there is that integration of using or producing all those kinds of products in one farm. Uh, that, that's enough, Ratna? Thank you, Mr. Did I answer the question, Doc? Yes, yes. Uh, she said okay. thank you, Doc. <laughs> all right. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, I think that's all uh, for today's public lecture. Uh, before I close, uh, I will give a short time for doc, Dr. Chale to give like a closing statement for today's public lecture. Please, Doc, closing statement. Yes, thank you, Doc. Uh, doc, let me take this opportunity to, to thank you first for creating this opportunity. And this actually shows the close or relationship in academy. And I also thank 
my dear students for making time to come and listen to me, especially in this lecture. Mind you, today is Saturday, but they sacrificed their weekend so that they come and listen to this lecture. To me, it's a very, very good thing. It's not during the week, it's during weekend. Therefore, I say good luck for your studies. Study hard so that you are able to pass easy. Thank you, Doc. Even in future, maybe let's continue like this so that we support each other. Who knows? Maybe my child will be doing a degree or honors degree or master's degree at University uh, uh, of Mohammed uh, Yogi Kata. Yes. Thank you. Uh, actually, for your information that my university is uh, providing uh, undergraduate scholarship, also master uh, master degree scholarship. So maybe if uh, your students or maybe your colleagues want to apply, uh, that's also welcome. So oh. now, yes, uh, now in my department, we have two international students, one from Kiribati and then one from Zambia, doc, from Africa. Oh. In undergraduate yes. program. Yes, yes. Thank you very much, Doc. Thank okay, Doc. Uh, yes. I want to discuss with you about the next lecture. So please don't leave, yeah. Please don't leave. I will talk. I will talk to my yes. student first. It said, okay. I think it's okay, Doc. It's your time. It's our time. Okay, okay. Uh, dear student. Uh, Halo teman-teman, untuk kelas C dan D minggu depan itu adalah teman-teman uh, akan melakukan praktikum terkait dengan uh, kebijakan pemerintah. Saya mau menawarkan teman-teman mau praktikum mandiri, tidak perlu datang ke kampus, atau teman-teman mau praktikum didampingi. Kalau didampingi nanti uh, ya saya akan ke kampus bersama dengan koas nanti akan mendampingi di kampus. Untuk instruksi praktikum kepemimpinan, eh kepemimpinan maaf, uh, government policy atau kebijakan pemerintah bisa dilihat di my class. Bagaimana kelas C dan D? Kelas C dan D mau praktikum mandiri atau mau di kelas didampingi? Uh, ditanyakan ke teman-teman dulu aja pak. Oh ya udah. Ditanyakan ke teman-teman dulu aja ya. Ya. Yeah. Oke. Okay. Selanjutnya sekedar informasi bahwasanya Dokter Cale ini adalah uh, menjadi salah satu tim pengajar dinamika masyarakat. Jadi untuk public lecture itu nanti akan berseri. Ini public lecture pertama, kemungkinan nanti akan ada dua atau tiga kali, termasuk hari ini. Ya. Jadi mohon dipahami bahwasanya ini merupakan upaya internasionalisasi prodi. Jadi ya teman-teman uh, bisa meluangkan waktu gitu ya. Terutama yang kelas C sama D. Karena yang uh, pe uh, pengampunya saya. Teman-teman saya mau menawarkan untuk uh, public lecture. Teman-teman uh, Sabtu seperti ini nggak apa-apa ya. Karena memang waktunya... Hanya Sabtu yang memungkinkan Karena dan juga kita itu waktunya 5 jam lebih cepat daripada Dr. Cale Di South Africa sekarang waktunya baru 15 kurangi 5 Berarti jam 10 Tadi kita mulai di sana itu jam 8 pagi Gitu ya Terus kemudian mau yang mau saya tanyakan lagi Ketika ada public lecture ya Terkait dengan semisal topik Uh, topik sekarang Topik minggu depan itu ah, Minggu depan Minggu depan adalah praktikum Minggu depannya lagi adalah Ujian tengah semester Untuk kelas C sama D Terus setelah itu Ada lingkungan dan kebencanaan Saya mau tanya Untuk setiap ada public lecture Biasanya saya Uh, saya hapus, saya ganti kuliah biasanya itu menjadi public lecture Tapi untuk kali ini saya mau 
tawarkan nanti silahkan didiskusikan kepada teman-teman intinya apa intinya ketika ada public lecture apakah kelas biasanya masih tetap harus dilaksanakan saya siap ya saya siap untuk tetap melaksanakan kelas seperti biasanya atau cukup dengan diganti dengan public lecture nanti silahkan ditanyakan berarti ada dua yang perlu ditanyakan didiskusikan kepada teman-teman yang pertama adalah praktikumnya mau mandiri atau mau didampingi Kemudian ketika ada public lecture berarti tiga minggu lagi ya tiga minggu uh, ya tiga minggu lagi akan ada public lecture lagi itu di minggu itu apakah perlu ada kelas biasanya kelas regulernya tetap perlu ada atau cukup dengan public lecture di hari Sabtu ya gitu apakah bisa dipahami dua dua pertanyaan dari saya bisa Pak. ya terus kamu Sekedar informasi nanti eh, Dr. Cale akan memberikan public lecture eh, pada dua tema. Tema tentang lingkungan dan bencana, kemudian tema tentang organisasi masyarakat. Untuk tema perkembangan teknologi itu nanti akan saya eh, ampu sendiri gitu ya. Untuk kelas eh, A dan B, untuk public lecture selanjutnya itu dibebaskan apakah mau ikut Alhamdulillah kalau nggak ikut nggak apa-apa tapi untuk kelas C dan D itu diwajibkan gitu ya tidak usah protes tidak usah membanding-bandingkan ya so for Terin so actually Dr. Cale is will be the team teaching or will be one of the teacher or lecturer in this community 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 dynamics course So next week will be uh, practice and then uh, after that the next next week will be uh, mid test mid term test and then after that uh, three weeks after this will be uh, we will have uh, another public lecture from Dr. Chale. So Dr. Chale will present two more topic two more topics in this community dynamics course. Uh, that's for the your notice. Is that okay, Tia? Ya, yeah, Pak. Terima kasih. Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, I think uh, for all student, uh, thank you very much for joining this meeting. For Dr. Chale, please don't leave after this. I will uh, I need to discuss with you for the next public lecture. Uh, for all student, thank you for joining and then see you uh, for the next public lecture. And wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam. Uh, untuk mahasiswa habis ini akan di share. Oh sudah di share. Di. Hah? Uh, sudah di share untuk attendance form. So uh, we have already sent. We have already share the attendance form. Please fill that form and then we will issue certificate for you ya. Yeah? So don't forget to fill that form. We will close that form uh, in this today midnight ya, yeah? midnight of today. So please don't pass that time because if you pass that time uh, we will not issue certificate for you. Okay, see you next event. You can leave this meeting because after this I will discuss with Dr. Chale for the next uh, public lecture, okay? You are you. free to leave this meeting. Ya. Terima kasih, Pak. Okay. Terima kasih, Pak. Terima kasih, Pak. Okay. Thank you, sir. Oke, okay, uh, just just leave. Uh, student, just leave. Don't need to say uh, thank you or maybe greeting, ya. Because I will discuss with Dr. Chale. Please mute your mic, oke? Okay? Just leave, just leave, ya. Yeah. Halo, uh, please mute your mic. Oke, okay, uh, dokter. So for the next next public lecture, because for the schedule uh, tiga minggu. How about uh, 28 November? 28 November. 
same same yes, o'clock, okay. same time. Is that okay, Doc? Yes, but I will check, Doc. You know, um, 28 is after two weeks from now. Is it two uh, three weeks? weeks three weeks. Three weeks from now, Doc. Three weeks oh, from now. Yes, because um, um, I'm I'm something at work. I'm a strategic manager at work. Then we are requested next week and that other week. Yes. Next week of the 13th. But if you cannot, it's okay. Uh, maybe maybe you can tell me when you are free. But it's better yeah. if uh, Saturday. So, or maybe 21 also okay, or yes. 28. So please just email me. Yes. Then let me get everything clear. Maybe during Monday, Tuesday, so that I get everything clear as to when am I going there for that strategic uh, planning. Mind you, we're starting to to plan for next year because this year we didn't do much because of COVID at work. Then I'm requested to be there, but I think we are having time, even after work, we are having time to prepare ourselves. Then let, 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 let's talk on, on Tuesday. It can be through WhatsApp. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can contact me through WhatsApp Tuesday. If Tuesday, uh, Uh, my student can can join the public lecture. Uh, wait. Uh, on uh, at 14 p.m. South Africa time, doc. 14 p.m. South Africa time because at that time we we are uh, in Indonesia at uh, 19:30 p.m. All right. I think All that's right. also okay for the public lecture. If you choose just uh, Tuesday, if you choose uh, Saturday, we can do like this. Uh, 8 a.m. Yes. in South Africa. No problem, Doc. Then myself, let me go and check clearly that program. Because if I was not the one who's spearheading, I couldn't have a challenge, but I'm expected to be there. Th that is why talk, one day I was telling you that I want to join one of the universities because now there is something that I like that we are doing. Now there is other people who they want their own things, different, parallel from what we are doing. But let, let's let's communicate on Tuesday. Okay. Uh, yeah, Tuesday. Yes, talk. So. Uh, for the next public lecture, the yeah. topic will be environment and disaster related okay. with community dynamics. Environment and disaster talk. Or, and maybe community. Yeah, related yes. with the community dynamics. And I hope uh, you can put more picture uh, come from yes. South Africa, yeah. Because uh, to this presentation, I think your picture is uh, quite little. So uh, if you put more picture, my student will be more interested. Yeah. You are right. You know, sorry, doctor, for for not putting the picture on the this one. Uh, I got the message very late, and I didn't have time to search the best pictures. But for this one, because I'm still having time. I will have those pictures. Yes, thank you very much, Doc. So just uh, yeah. let's let's uh, communi communicating through WhatsApp, yeah, Doc, yeah, or email. Yes. yes. Okay, I think that's all from me, Doc. Uh, do you have any question or uh, anything that you want to say? No. I, I, I want to, to to joke with you. Community <laughs> Can you see I'm having a jacket? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 you are wearing suits, right? Uh, it's because I'm from another different community. If you go to a meeting, 
like now it's an a formal meeting. If you are a man, you put this. Yes, yes. That's why I'm putting this even down far away from you, so that in the some records in South African <laughs> community, they can't say, no, 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 why didn't you put one, two, three? Even though I, you can send those records, they will say, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the way <laughs> things should be. <laughs> but and if, me, if, yeah. Uh, if now I'm me, wearing, we call it batik. Batik is a uh, okay. traditional clothes. Uh, in Indonesia, okay. so maybe uh, in the future, if you come to, to Indonesia, I will give you uh, this kind of clothes batik. <laughs> it's called batik. It's traditional no clothes in Indonesia. Ah, uh, no problem, Doc. No problem. No, it's just a joke. Just a joke to say uh, those are part of dynamics. And when we go for community meetings, we put these things. But it's fine, Doc. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Doc. Uh, see you for the next uh, lecture. I really yes. appreciate your today's uh, presentation. was uh, was great. You you state so many example from uh, South Africa, but maybe yes. maybe uh, in my opinion, maybe uh, uh, need more picture. Yeah. So actually, your story was very good. Yes. But uh, yes. that will be more. Uh, that will be better if you can show uh, the that picture of your story, right? Yes. No, that one. The rest was short. No? If that had, uh, I didn't have enough time. The time we're talking yeah, about yeah. pictures on the slides. Yeah. The rest was short. You get it. Yes. Okay. See you, Doc. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>